honors in this special installation service for the pastor that we're having today. But we still have to worship. Worship is first, installation is second. So we're going to invite those of you that are here in our sanctuary as well as those of you even at home. Would you stand with this opening of the chorus of worship? Good morning. 
morning. May we bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we thank you for another day's journey. Thank you for being the God of this universe. The God that created all of us and everything that we see in this world. Thank you for watching over us all night last night. As we slumbered and as we slept. And thank you, Lord, for early this morning you shook us with your finger of love and gave us new life and new breath to a new dawn of the day. We stretched our arms and we did our yarns and we took our showers. We ate our breakfast. We got into our clothes, got into our cars, drove down the street, came to these doors at Brady Michael Baptist Church. Lord, we say thank you. You didn't have to do it, but you did it anyway. We didn't deserve this, but you looked beyond our faults. You saw our need. Gave us new life, and we stand above ground this morning to say thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you because we're able to see our loved ones, sisters, brothers, husbands, wives, sons, and daughters. Somehow they didn't wake up this morning, but you woke us up this morning. You look beyond our faults, despite of what life we led. You gave us grace and mercy. Here we are to say thank you for another day's journey. Thank you for this day as we honor and do our pastor's installation. Thank you for the new leader. Bless his life, bless his church, bless his family. That we may grow in Christ and grow in unity be a blessing to this community and to all that we come into contact with. Lord, be with us and guide us and keep us. Lord, bless those who own our city shutting this, those who are in the convalescent homes. Touch them right now, God. You know what their problem is. You know how to heal them. Like you gave sight to a blind man. And you touched I have a woman to touch the hill of Jesus' garment and she was healed. I know you can heal us. Lord, be with us and guide us in this service. Bless you preach word. Bless Pastor Bradley as he preaches his word this morning. Let him preach an uncompromising gospel. If someone may up crying, what must I do to be saved? Lord, be with us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray and ask you. Amen. Thank God. Good morning, Grady Band and Church family and friends. It is so good to see you all today. We come to celebrate and be part of an installation service, but listen, I come to serve the Lord. I come to worship the Lord. And they're playing a song called Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's the one that I come to witness to. So if you're in the audience today, why don't you stand if you can? And we just gonna sing our voices to the Lord. And we just gonna call upon his name. The song says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know it. Come on. Everybody.
now ready for our worship through our tithes and our offerings. We would ask the officers and the ushers to come at this time, please. Yeah. For I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? Will a man of God? Yet he have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In times and we are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation.
give an introduction of our guest minister on this morning. All right. This morning we have Dr. Johnny R. Bradley Sr., senior pastor at Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church of Dallas, was born and reared in Pensacola, Florida, and attended Pensacola Public Schools. Dr. Bradley was compelled to preach the gospel at the age of 19 years old. Dr. Bradley received a Bachelor of Science in Christian Ministry from Dallas Baptist University in December of 2006 and completed a Master of Arts in Christian Education from Dallas Baptist University in December of 2009. Dr. Bradley received an honorary doctoral degree from Oakdale Bible College for his Christian service and community support in 2010 and an honorary doctoral degree from Virginia University of Lynchburg in 2014. Recently, Dr. Bradley received a doctor of ministry degree from Anderson University in Anderson, South Carolina, December the 15th, 2016. The topic of his dissertation was Preaching Forms Utilized by Dr. E.K. Bailey. Yeah. Dr. Johnny R. Bradley has been the servant leader of Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church since August of 2006. In November of 2012, Dr. Bradley was elected as the 11th president of Dallas, Baptist, Dallas Bible Theological Institute. Dallas Bible Theological Institute was formerly the D. Edward Johnson Bible Institute in Dallas, Texas. Dr. Johnny R. Bradley is married to the wonderful and charming DeAndre K. Bradley and the father of three sons, Joshua Lee, Jeremiah Hamilton, and Johnny Rufus Jr., and one daughter, daughter Jillian K. May we all put our hands together and give God praise for our speaker of the hour. I present to you, Dr. Johnny R. Bradley Sr.
Father, how grateful we are. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. For your grace and your mercy. If it wasn't for you on our side, we don't know where we would be. Thank you, O oh God, that it is another day's journey. And for that, we are glad about it. I, Johnny R. Bradley, senior, understand the awesome responsibility of rightly dividing the word of truth. Speak to me, speak for me, but most of all, speak through me. And I pray that the church will receive what your spirit has to say. Rescue me from me that I might be used for thee. And we would be so extra careful to give you all of the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, the name that is above every name, that every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. In Jesus' name, name we pray and all of God's people say amen amen, amen. amen. and amen again if you love Jesus give him a hand clap let me say how honored I am to be here on today to celebrate along with you a wonderful occasion and I am just honored I knew uh, Pastor Burley Hudson and uh, now I know your covered pastor Pastor R. John Robinson I'm going to say this and then I'll Go ahead and began uh, before he was Pastor R. John Robinson. He was faithful, dutiful, humble, and he was an encourager. You do know he came from Shiloh, right? I don't hear nobody saying that. Amen, somebody. And so we are so proud of Pastor John Robinson and his uh, wonderful wife, Lady Robinson, and their family. Can we give them a hand? Yeah, so proud On this morning at our church, we launched our vacation Bible school. And so they got stuff cooking on the parking lot and all of that going on, the seafood brawl. And I shared with the saints, I said, y'all going to make me go over here by myself. And amen. Uh, but I'm glad to be here. And I am excited because I believe that the best is yet to come. Amen. I would like to call your attention to 2 Timothy chapter number 2. I'm sorry, chapter number 4, verse 2. 2 Timothy 4. I'll tell you what, let me read verses 1 and 2. How about that? You found it, can you say amen? You still looking, say, help me, Jesus. You know, Jesus will help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Ask the Savior to help you. And he will carry you through. Got it? Say, I got it. I will be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And if you have another version, uh, it will read just a little bit different than mine. I charge thee. Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, 
who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. All right, all right. Preach the word. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Be instant in season, out of season. Yeah. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering all right, all right. Come on. and doctrine. For a little while on today as we encourage this transition and this pastor, I want to talk about briefly the pastor and his preaching. The pastor and his preaching. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know which I'm sure many of us already do, uh, that we are in a unique time yeah. in history. Yeah. Right. I say we are in a unique time yeah. simply because people call wrong right yeah. and call right wrong. Yeah. And if there ever was a time that we need pastoral leadership to set the record straight is right now. Why do I say this? Because pastoral leadership is needed now more than ever. Do I have a witness here? So much is going on to the point if we were being honest and transparent you and I can't even keep up with it. Things switch on a daily basis. And as we come together as a body of believers, week in and week out, the pastor has a responsibility to make sure that he addresses issues that are occurring. And this is why I said now, more than ever before, we need pastors who are going to preach. And the pastor must remember that he must tell it like it is. Cut it straight. Do I have a witness? Not trying to be clever, but clear. So that the people of God may understand what God is saying so that they can respond by governing themselves accordingly. Have I got a witness here? And this is what Paul is doing when he is addressing his protege, Timothy. Paul's letters to Timothy is a part of the pastoral epistles, which addresses the leader and leadership issues in the local church. Timothy oversaw the church at Ephesus. And Paul's letter along with uh, Titus, uh, you will discover in these letters are pastoral epistles. In these letters, there are topics such as qualifications for elders, deacon and minister relationships, inspiration of scripture, the treatment of widows, and the expectation of God's reward for those who endure to the end. Remember that First Timothy advocates a straight gospel, while Second Timothy advocates a straight life. First Timothy says, guard your doctrine and teaching, which is the message from God. But Second Timothy said, we need to guard our testimony. You can't teach or preach the way you should if you have a raggedy life. I wish I had a witness here. First Timothy says, get ready to fight. Shoulder your arms. Polish your metal. Get your ammunition ready. Why 2 Timothy says, keep marching. Face the front. Make sure your shoulders are square. 
and follow your commander in chief who is Jesus Christ. Uh, basically, according to Paul's writing, your walk is just as necessary as your weapons. You can have all the weapons you want to, but if your walk ain't right, God ain't pleased. Have I got a witness here? Let me drop it down Oak Cliff style to you. In other words, your lips have to line up with your lifestyle. Are y'all in here with me today? The walk and the weapon you use will affect your work. And that's why the pastor has to be concerned about his preaching and teaching. Have I got a witness here? Yeah. Second Timothy is a letter that the apostle wrote from his last imprisonment in Rome. Yeah. If you can shape it or sum it up or evaluate it, this is a valedictory speech. In which Paul himself in 2 Timothy 4 and 6 informs us that this really is his last letter because he says, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. But Paul said, now is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Simply because Paul gave it all he had. Are y'all here with me? But let's remember now, Paul couldn't say these things, uh, my brothers and sisters, until he lived out what he was talking about. In other words, he sacrificed successfully and he preached God's word. Pastor Robinson, if there's any encouragement that I can give you on today, it would be make sure you preach the word. Don't preach just to make people shout, but preach to challenge them. Preach so much so that sometimes they're going to leave church mad with you. I wish I had a witness here. Let me say it to you like that. Some of us didn't like castor oil that our parents gave to us, but what we discovered is that the castor oil worked. Do I have a witness here? Some of the medicine you will receive Sunday after Sunday might not be the medicine to make you throw your hands up, but it will challenge you as you live for the Lord throughout the week. Can you do me a favor and point at somebody and say, thank God we got a pastor that will preach. You can grow this church, lead this church, and love this church properly. If you engage in biblical preaching. There's a whole lot of preaching going on. But it ain't biblical. I wish I had a witness here. I'm talking about that prosperity preaching. Like naming and claiming. Blaming and grabbing. Have I got a witness here? But I've never heard anybody preach. Uh, I'm talking about passionately. When God says no. Did you not know sometimes God says no. Have I got a witness here? Well, aren't you glad that there have been times in your life that God has said no? Y'all ain't saying that to me. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? No to the job. No to the boot. No to the bank. Listen, if God wouldn't have said no sometimes, you wouldn't be where you are right now. Pastor, you have been called. To preach and teach unselfishly, yes. consciously. Yes. Have I got a witness here? Yes. And this is all Paul is doing all right. here when he encourages Timothy. Uh -huh. Like I said, this is a pastoral epistle. Right. And Paul was passionate about preaching and teaching. Yes. Matter of fact, he sacrificed his life. Yes. Yes. Do I have a witness? Yes. To travel, to preach, and teach, and encourage the saints. And so when Paul preached here, he let his protege, Timothy, know uh, that his preaching and teaching was important. What am I saying? The pastor and his preaching, first of all, is a mandate. Can you say a mandate? He says to him, listen, Timothy, I charge you. 
He therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall what? Judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. He says, preach the word. Listen, this is a mandate. This is a command. This is a directive. This is an obligation. The pastor has an obligation to preach the word. And basically, Pastor Robinson, we don't have a choice. We have to herald or preach the word. It refers to uh, a king sending a messenger before him. The herald was one to sound out the king's word with a voice that was loud and clear. Yeah. The message was to be heard and needed. The messenger was to be respected and unhindered. Uh -huh. He was not an ambassador, one that might negotiate. He was a messenger to say what thus says the Lord. Amen. What am I saying? I'm saying it's not your message all you are is a mailman. I wish I had a witness here. And when the mailman puts the mail in your mailbox, just say thank you, Lord. He said, preach the word. The word refers to the whole counsel of God. The preacher's mandate is to be a man of the word. Acts 20 and 27 says, For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Yeah. This man of the word could not preach uh, without wisdom yeah. and God giving him the ability to share the word. Yeah. Are y'all here with me? Yeah. The message is to be God's word alone. This will require, as 2 Timothy 2 and 15 declares, to study, to show yourself approved. Yeah. Who is a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. In other words, you got to cut it straight. Have I got a witness here? You got to make sure you measure it just like Paul said and cut it right down the middle. Sometimes it ain't going to feel good, but you got to preach the word. And the preacher's life is to be a lifetime commitment in studying the word of God. Are y'all here with me? He said, preach the word. And when you preach it, you are instant. The word instant here has the idea of being present or being ready. The idea here is that there will be times, Pastor Robinson, that preaching is easy. And there will be times when preaching is hard. There will be times when preaching is fun. And there will be times where you ain't going to want to preach at all. But Paul says it is a mandate and you must preach the word. Have I got a witness here? There will be times where you'll be waiting to preach, excited to get up. And there will be times that you don't want to get up. Matter of fact, there will be times that you ain't going to even want to come to church. But he said it's a mandate. And you got to preach the word. You have to preach regardless of what's going on, regardless of what's said in the gossip column, regardless of what's being challenged in the church. God says that it's a mandate and you must preach the word. Come on, point at this preacher and say, preach the word. You say, be yes, because it's a mandate. But secondly, you not only preach because it's a mandate, you preach as well because you must preach an authentic message. In other words, the message must be reliable. Are y'all here with me? This message must be dependable. This message must be faithful. You must be trustworthy to communicate, to dispatch the idea that God has given you when you cut it straight. The pastor's preaching must be an authentic message because the preacher is charged and commanded, look at verse 1, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Timothy is reminded, Pastor Robinson, that God and his son Jesus 
are observing the ministry of the pastor and the preacher. He also reminds him that one day the preacher going to give an account. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 10 says, For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of the deeds that we've done in this body. Whether good or bad. Let me give it to you like this. Whether publicly or whether what you committed was in your closet. I wish I had a witness here. You ought to point at somebody and say, everybody got a closet. This message must be a convincing and convicting message. Because sometimes you got to reprove. And when preaching causes reproving, you are trying to preach so conviction will occur. This has in mind that preaching corrects errors or men's beliefs or practices. I told you in the beginning, folk are saying wrong is right. And right is wrong. Have I got a witness? So sometimes you got to reprove. Can you say reprove? But also sometimes you got to rebuke. This message is authentic because, Pastor Robinson, it is a convicting message, but then it is a confronting message. While a reproof exposes the sinfulness of sin. I want you to hear me. A rebuke exposes the sinfulness of the sinner. Y'all heard what I said? Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let me say it to you like this. Don't think that you all that in a bag of chips. You miss it just like everybody else. You ought to point at somebody and say, no sense of you looking at me like that. I got issues just like you. And sometimes your preaching must confront the issues that people are facing. Are y'all with me here? I said it's a convicting message. It's a confronting message. But it's also a comforting message. Are y'all with me? You reprove. You rebuke. But then you exhort means to call along one side. When we preach, we must thunder against sin. Are y'all here with me? But we are also to encourage and comfort people who have turned from sin. What am I saying? You can't throw anybody away. Because if it wasn't for the Lord on your side, where would you be on today? If it wasn't for the Lord shielding you and keeping you and strengthening you, where would you be right now? Is there anybody in here that can testify that if it wasn't for the Lord on your side? And so it must be a comforting message, a confronting message, and a convicting message. But then it must be a compassionate message. Look what he says. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Who's going to judge the quick, the living, were quick, living, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom? He said, preach the word. You be instant, in season, and out of season. You reprove. You rebuke, you exhort, but then there's some long suffering. Remember, I told you now, it's a convicting message, it's a confronting message, it's a comforting message, it's a, a compassionate message as well. In other words, you're going to have to suffer long. You're going to have to be there for individuals that don't want you there. Hear nobody say it. And listen, and you can't come to church on a Sunday morning uh, and them pick out a sermon to preach on them because they made you mad. I wish I had a witness here. You got to stick with the word. Are y'all in here with me? It means long suffering. This word gives the idea of patience and endurance. And as a preacher carries his 
God-given uh, ministry to confront sin, challenge the saints. He must comfort those who are hurting. And listen, church, you are not the only ones that are hurting. Sometimes the pastor get hurt too. Are y'all in here with me? Y'all were saying amen a while ago. Talk to me here. Is there anybody in here that heard what I said? He gets hurt sometimes too. So you got to suffer long. In other words, he put up with you and you put up with him. Are we here together? That's when you have an authentic message. When the saints can come together. Even though sometimes you disagree on some things, but you can still move forward with an understanding. Are y'all here with me? I said the pastor and his preaching is a mandate. I said the pastor and his preaching, uh, it must be an authentic message. But last and not least, the pastor as he preaches must abstain from ministerial male practice. He says, preach the word. If you want to abstain from ministerial male practice, meaning negligence, mismanagement, are y'all here with me? Or just saying, this is what I feel that the Lord said. No, it ain't about what you feel. Because our feelings change. Have I got a witness? Uh, how many of us dated somebody else in high school? Thought we was going to be with them for the rest of our lives. But your feelings change. Are y'all here with me? But I heard Isaiah say it. In Isaiah 48 that the grass will. <laughs> and the flower of faith. But God's word will stand forever. Are y'all here with me? You have been charged to stay away from ministerial male practice. Yeah. When the preacher preaches, it is easy to lose the respect of those who he's preaching to. Yeah. Because there are so many issues occurring in our society. Yeah. Sin is rampant yeah. and sin is vicious. Yeah. Take it out, whoever play with it. Yeah. Are y'all here with me? But Paul says, Timothy, I want you to stay away from ministerial male practice. I want you to be one of the word. Which is really, uh, he's saying, stay away from mockery and ridicule. Stay away from scorn and contempt. In other words, watch your crowd. Don't be the talk of the town. Are y'all in here with me today? You, you don't want to be the talk of the town. Uh, people uh, feel as if they know all about your lifestyle. Listen, try to live the best you can to give God the glory. Yeah. Are y'all in here with me? And you do it by being watchful. Yeah. This word means to abstain from whatever uh, you have allowed yourself to abuse. Yeah. Abusing uh, leads to intoxication. <laughs> it means to be sober and alert. What is Paul saying to Timothy? Paul is saying to Timothy, if you're going to be a pastor and if you're going to preach that your life must line up just like you are expecting the saints' lives to line up. <laughs> Have I got a witness? Don't preach one thing uh, on Sunday and live another way on Monday. Have I got a witness here? Allow your lifestyle to line up with your lips. Don't be one of those who doesn't endure, yes, sound doctrine like you are expecting others to endure it. Have I got a witness here? I don't know about you here, uh, Fred Emanuel, but I thank the Lord that you got a pastor, yes, that endeavors to live what he preaches. He is a serious young man. And he loves the Lord. He loves his wife and his family. And he 
tries, yes, to live a life, yes, that God is glorified with. Is there anybody in here, thank God for the pastor and his preaching? Have I got a witness? Is there anybody in here excited about the fact that God has sent you a pastor from his own heart? Are we here together? Do me a favor. Look at somebody. Say, neighbor. Thank God for our pastor. That does a swell job preaching. He can't preach like he preaches unless he's empowered by the Holy Ghost. Have I got a witness here? And I don't know how you feel about it today. I'm excited about Pastor R. John Robinson. I'm excited because God has lifted him up. I'm excited about the fact that God had his hand on him all the time. And sometimes you can come from obscurity where people are not paying attention to you. And God is shaping and making you and molding you into what he wants you to be. Is there anybody here that can testify with me that God has been working with you all the time? He has been moving on you. He has been shaping you uh, because you're in his hands. Uh, have I got a witness? Now, this is the last time. Uh, point at somebody's a neighbor. Uh, we're in the Lord's hands. Uh, and there are no better hands to be in. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, because when you're in his hands, uh, he gives you joy, uh, unspeakable joy. Uh, when you're in his hands. Uh, he put love in your heart. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, I'm almost out of here, church. Uh, and may the Lord bless you real good. Uh, because I'm excited about the pastor and his preaching. Uh, you got to preach the word. Uh, Reverend Robinson stand on the word. Uh, and when you talk to people, use the word. Uh, and when you give advice, give them the word. Uh, have I got a witness him. Because there is no secret what God can do. What he's got for others, he'll do the same for you. Can you say it? The pastor cannot preach unless God give him a word. Have I got a witness? And in order for you to preach and to have a word, you got to get in the word. Have I got a witness here? Because it's a mandate. Because it's supposed to be an authentic message. And when you stand on the word, you stay away from ministerial male practice. How many of us go to a dentist that just got a certification in being an auto mechanic? How many of us go see a lawyer that did not complete? I wish I had a witness here. Law school. Have I got a witness? You want somebody that stay with the word, that's trained in the word, because God can use those who stick with the word. Can you say it? Well, I'm out of here, church. May the Lord bless you real good. And the reason why you stay with the word is because they stretched him wide and because they hung him high. Can you say he died? Can you say he died? But when they took him down, they put him in a borrowed tomb, stayed in the grave. Can you say all night? Friday night, all day, Saturday day, all night, Saturday night. But can you say early? Can you say early? He got up with all power. Is there anybody here who loves Jesus? Say yeah. Say yeah. Is there anybody here? Thank God for Jesus. Say yeah. I said, ain't he able? I said, won't he work it out? Say, yeah.
I said, won't he do it? Be not dismayed. Whatever be time, God will take care of you. Are y'all here with me? I came over here to preach to this pastor. Amen. That's the message I came with the preaching this pastor. Let him know his preaching is a mandate. He must have an authentic message. And he must stay away from ministerial male practice. Lives lie in the balance. Amen. He's been trained. He's been set aside. And God is going to use for his glory. I'm grateful to God. To say without a shadow of a doubt. That this pastor. Believes in preaching. Come on let's give God a hand clap of praise.
He loves us just as much as he does his only begotten son. This is why we have an opportunity when the preacher preaches there's a time set aside that we can accept the word of God to come into our lives. Today is a good day to say, Lord, here I am. I'm tired of the way the world has treated me. I'm tired of the lifestyle that I have been living. I want to be one of your children. Come into my life. Today is a good day to say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. You see, one day we're all going to die. Don't let the world fool you. There is a hereafter. And where you go makes all the difference in the world. Today is a good day to accept Christ. Today is a good day to come into my life. Control me. Guide me. Lead me. When you come, the door of the church is open. Today is a good day. Oh, he's been so faithful to us. And we have been so unfaithful to him. Like the pastor said, those closets that we got, we all got them. Don't you know that Jesus sees everything in that closet? Satan is trying to destroy our young people. Every day. He's not in an attack on the young folk. The day is a good day to give your life to God. The day is a good day. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Nobody's angry but Satan himself.
Adam, Thick and Shut-In members. Let us pray for them. Sister Vera Kelly, Sister Cornette Webb, Sister Gloria Anderson, Sister Darlene DeHorney, Brother Norman Jernigan, Sister Fanny George, who is with us this morning. Yeah.
be accepted via Facebook Live. Our first Prayer Wednesday will be the night of June 21st. <coughs> also, welcome. We want to welcome our newest member, Sister Sandra Jennings. So please welcome her. <laughs> Let the church say amen. 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 Again, thank you so much for the kindness that you have displayed uh, to me and uh, how grateful we are for Great Emmanuel Church. And that we believe wholeheartedly that eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, or yet the thoughts enter into the hearts of men of the great things in God has in store for you. Church, be encouraged and uh, encourage your pastor, his wife, and their family. And uh, I believe that this is just going to be a great union. Amen. Amen. And uh, for those who I have not met, I'm glad to meet you. And uh, at any time at the Shadow Church, to be an encouragement uh, Pastor Robinson knows all you have to do is let us know. Uh, because we plan to invite Great Emmanuel over to the Shadow Church. Amen. Amen. And, uh, your pastor has preached for us a couple of times. And uh, we are very, very uh, impressed with him and his family and his ministry. And uh, we thank the Lord for him. Let me say again, you do know he's from Shadow. Right? <laughs> All right, I'm just supposed to do the benediction. All right, let us stand. <laughs> Father, how grateful we are for what you have done. And we know that you do all things well. I pray, Lord, that you will bless this church, pastor, his wife and his family. I pray that you bless each and every member and even the preachers that are here serving music department, every ministry leader. Thank you for what you've done for so many years. The great Emmanuel Church, and Lord, we're looking for greater. And we know you're able. Pray that you would bless them as they move forward. Bless the installation service. Bless the preacher that will stand on this evening. Use him for your glory. Now may the same in grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the everbiding presence of the Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide now, henceforth, and forever. Bless the food that they're about to receive and utilize for the upbuilding of their bodies as well. In Jesus' name I pray. Can we all say amen? Amen. amen. And amen. Look at somebody and let them know that you love them and there's nothing they can do about it.